The ancient people of this land believed that some mountains connected the world of man to the hidden world of the divine. And today, the descendants of the Incas keep alive those old traditions and give offerings to the mountain spirits. In this video, I'll cover three treks in the Peruvian Alpine, but first, we should understand a few things about the people who live here. Today, the ancestors of the Inca and many Peruvians believe the peaks to be living spirits and a form of communication to their gods. The Incas refer to a specific mountain as an Apu, a protective and powerful mountain spirit which watches over the people, the cattle, and the crops in its territory. An Apu was a gateway to heaven. The three treks in this video lead to the sacred mountains of Apu Salkantai, Apu Umantai, and Apu Vinicunca, all accessible day trips out of Cusco. You see, Cusco was the ancient capital of the Incan Empire, which flourished from 1400 to 1533 CE, as it spanned much of the western edge of South America. Since the Incan civilization was born within the Andes Mountains, their relationship between the divine and the mystical landscape developed naturally. In return for the care of the spirits, the Incans made offerings to their apus with chicha, corn liquor, and coca leaves. And yes, during desperate times, they resorted to human sacrifice, but I asked and it's no longer common practice. Now that we're respectfully aware about the beliefs of this land, I want to share with you three hikes where you can experience these spiritual landscapes. They're open to the public and foreigners are encouraged to go as long as you are respectful to the environment. I'll provide practical tips for hiking in this environment, the duration and details of each hike, and more information about the Incas so you can hike respectfully and sustainably. On these trails, you will run into the descendants of the Incas, and during the last hike in this video, you'll see the offering our group performed, which is a common practice for foreigners and locals alike. I believe if you are knowledgeable and respectful of the people and environment in this remote part of the world, it can be a celebration of life and a wonderful exchange of ideas. Let's explore the Peruvian Alpine. The first place I want to take you is Apu Salkantay. The famous Salkantay trek, which leads to Machu Picchu, is considered one of the 25 best treks in the world by Nat Geo. But even doing a one-day hike to this mountain that sits at 20,000 feet is worth it. As our group advanced on the trail, we began hiking in a beautiful open valley with zigzagging streams, roaming wildlife, and strange rock formations leading to Salkantay, meaning the wild or savage mountain in Quechua. The trail will feature free-roaming horses and llamas, and it is truly their land, so please be mindful. The Salkantay represents one of the highest peaks of the Vilcabamba range, after Asangate, and they considered it one of the divinities that controlled climate and fertility in Cusco. So what do you need to know to attempt this hike? Well, this trail starts at 2,800 meters, or 9,000 feet, and reaches 4,600 meters, or roughly 15,000 feet. So the altitude is the biggest challenge here. I should Killing mention it. that the Peruvian Alpine is very high, so you should acclimate right. in Cusco before so attempting. Once you're ready, you can find this trail within a four-hour drive right. outside Cusco. Our group booked through a local tour company, but you can also access these trails on your own. The Trail of Salguntay is moderate to difficult, given your fitness level, and if you want a real challenge, take the seven snakes up the mountain. Our trek was about nine miles or 12 kilometers, but lasted about seven hours approximately, given our breaks. But the alpine views in Salkantay did not disappoint. In terms of gear, I'll list a few items on the screen that are necessary. Although it is cold when starting the trails, the sun here beats down dangerously since Peru is located close to the equator. Bring your active jackets, but also bring a sun hat, glasses, and lots of sunscreen to protect yourself from the stronger UV rays. This stacking of rocks is called an apacheta, and they are a common form of spiritual offering at the second trail that I want to share with you. And thankfully, it's right next door. The second trail I want to share leads to Apu Umantai. However, it's not just the mountain that's sacred, but the glacier lagoon which sits at its base. The lagoon is visited by Peruvian shamans and tourists from all over the world to leave offerings to Pachamama the deity that represents Mother Earth in the Incan culture. 
You can do this as well. Choose a stone before starting the path, make a prayer to Pachamama at the lake, and stack the stone on another by the lake with three coca leaves. You've now created an apacheta. This is a perfectly accepted practice for visitors to the lake. However, you are not allowed to swim in the lake. That would be a rude act by the locals. So please be respectful. So what do you need to know to hike to Apu Umantai? The good news is, is that it's located right next to Salkantai, so you can hit both trails if you're in the area. The lagoon sits at an elevation of 13,700 feet, so once again, you must be acclimated for this hike. The lack of air caused by the altitude can make a relatively short path feel endless. The trail starts in a beautiful open valley and leads you up a rocky terrain, which seems fairly short at first. We started our hike at the trailhead at 12,630 feet and early on came across streams and waterfalls and we're beginning to experience a moderately difficult hike. So we took a few breaks for snacks and to admire the views around us. Note that although the hike is only 1.3 miles one way, it can take 1.5 to 3 hours to reach the mountain due to inclination and altitude. Groggy and tired from the early start, we slowly edged along the hillside of Umantai until we found the lagoon nestled right underneath at 13,000 feet. After marveling at those pristine waters, our group wandered around the hillsides to fully explore Apu Umantai's landscape. I'll throw the gear list on the screen here and I'll add that you should bring trekking poles to handle the rocky incline and take some weight off your joints. Keep wearing light layers, keep putting on sunscreen and drink plenty of water because the altitude will hit you. And keep those coca leaves on you at all times. They really do help with the altitude, especially when heading to our last hike. At 17,000 feet, our group made offerings to Pachamama with the help of our guide. In order to go to Upper Winnikunka, we were ready to go at 4 a.m. After driving three hours northwest of Cusco, our group ate a groggy breakfast where we drank lots of coca tea with some suspiciously friendly company. I was nervous about the altitude and what it would mean to give an offering, and the bumpy and windy road to the trailhead was not helping. These llamas look suspicious. When we reached the trailhead at 12,700 feet, we encountered the descendants of the ancient Incas, who speak the native language of Quechua. So unfortunately, none of my Spanish was helpful here, but our guides spoke casually to them and they were happy to see us. Being in this environment with the people who truly own this land makes you feel like you're part of a different time. As our group set out on the first part of the hike, we encountered barely any incline as a trail carves along a hillside towards Apu Vinikunka. It's worth mentioning that although you won't see Rainbow Mountain until the end of the hike, the views on the trail are beautiful glacier peaks, a spanning valley below the trail, and of course, free-ranging llamas everywhere. We just need to deal with the rocky terrain and the altitude to get to the top. All right, guys, we made it to the trail. Altitude is hitting us. Everyone has shortness of breath. And he's drinking water. Some type of, you know, knees weak, arms are heavy, mom's spaghetti type of situation. Oh my God. So, we're about 17,000 feet or 4,500 meters. Oh okay, yeah, we're at 15.6. We got critics over here, clearly. Anyways, for all of our fans in Europe, that's 4,500. <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah, all right. Some more friendship, some coca leaves, cheers. We hiked up in good spirits and encouraged each other along the way to eat as many stemmy coca leaves as possible. And eventually, we made it. top we had 360 degree views of the Andean range and the colorful terrain and I couldn't help but feel a sense of gratefulness for the people around me and for the natural landscape that I was experiencing. The awe that these places even existed and that the people that I was hiking with were all there in the same place to share it. And the celebration of that moment was forever captured by our offering to the landscape. We're gonna pass another life. The parents, they they thought, my children, they're gonna pass for another life. They're gonna be with the gods, and they're gonna 
protect us. In Quechua, we call it quinto. So I'm gonna give to you three of that. Before, of course, you have to be grateful because the world is big. You're gonna visit another place, but not all the time to come here and to stay and to have this country. You know, look into me, and you can offer first to one of the apples that is full of Sangati. You know, apple is cut. And you have to blend first, you know, which is thanks to apple Sangati. This offering has been practiced for thousands of years, but this mountain is actually relatively newly discovered. The first tours only started in 2016. The famous colors were hidden under centuries of snow and ice, and most likely due to climate change, it gradually melted away. After coming down from the top, a lot of us felt the altitude sickness, but we also felt more connected to the landscape around us. I sincerely hope you get a chance to hike these trails and experience why the Incans believe the mountain spirits did not fade away following the demise of the Incan Empire. The old beliefs live on, and to be honest, they're not so different from how modern religions communicate with their god, but that's a separate video. Just remember that when you come to Peru, the descendants of the Incas have a great respect for their land, and I hope that you do as well. If you love cultural and adventure travel, consider subscribing. I'll be sharing more amateur adventures as I explore outside. I'll see you on the next one.